Hello everyone, welcome back to Roll for Damage. Today, I'm going to show you how to make an observatory for a wizard's chamber. Uh, we're going to start with a uh, clock, like an internal clock mechanism. So, here it is. Uh, there's just little pieces. I bought this from, I believe, Hobby Lobby. It was six bucks. Um, after finishing this project, I wish I would have splurged for the little... Uh, one that was a little more expensive than this one. Uh, this one was just kind of uh, cheap, uh, and, and the gears on the inside weren't uh, strong enough, uh, so it took a little tweaking for me to do this. But anyway, I would recommend not going with the cheapest uh, clock, internal clock parts that you could. Uh, that being said, let's get with the build. So I have a styrofoam ball that I'm going to use for my globe. And what I'm going to do is I'm cutting it off right below where the actual uh, nipple of the clock will come through. That way I have enough clearance. I'm not going to use the hours hand. Uh, I'm just going to use the minutes hand and the seconds. So I need to make sure that my bottom, whatever that lowest hand is on the clock, has clearance and won't scrape. All right, so, next so that's me I'm just ready to uh, put both hands on. And this was more of a just to see if it was still working because, I, like I told you before, I was having problems with these gears. And uh, the more I researched it, um, I probably shouldn't have been messing with the minutes hand uh, because that was a higher gear ratio and it was more prone to throwing my second hand out of gear. Um, so if you're going to have to play and reroute uh, arms, I also suggest using the dial on the bottom of the clock. Don't use the actual arms to force it. Alright, so now I'm going to cut this little piece out, the center out, where that pattern is. That's actually an imprint from where the nut was being pressed onto it. And I'm only cutting this out so my globe will sit flush on this uh, little plastic dais that is below the nuts on this clock. Um, even now, later on, I still wasn't happy with that clearance and I still went back and shaved a tiny layer off the bottom. Um, this is me checking again. And, and, and once again, I, I'm going to have weights, I'm going to have beads on these, and I just wanted to make sure that even with a little bit of sag, it wasn't going to get caught. And I still have yet to apply glue to this. So I, I was just making sure to get it a little bit lower than, than I had it. And also, this is not glued. And uh, you see what I did right there is I accidentally pushed down too far on the back of my second hand, and it binded to my minute hand and wouldn't let it free turn. Um, so there I'm trying to adjust it and to fix it back to flush. Alright, so now I'm just going to put two tiny little beads uh, to secure my bottom base to the actual clock uh, mechanism. I'm going to hold down pressure uh, just to make sure that that hot glue will melt into that styrofoam because this is, this is true styrofoam or, you know, uh, it's not, you know, XPS or EVA or high density foam whatsoever. Um, so they're a little more susceptible to, uh, to hot glue, to, to temperatures. All right, so once I got it in place and it dried, I'm gonna do my test again to make sure I still have clearance, that I'm not at an awkward angle. Um, everything works out okay. While this is a very important feature to make sure that the gear um, doesn't scrape or get stuck on the styrofoam or any kind of burr sticking up, make sure that you actually get the rest of the globe um, because you're going to be painting it as well.
and in hindsight, uh, it may have been easier to paint these globes uh, first and then put all our accessories on that we're going to do and then just go back and do touch-ups uh, because it was much more tedious to go back and try to paint things that you could have painted from the beginning. Alright, so this is also another thing that I learned is I, I was trying in my head, I wanted to make sure that my globe was going to be perfectly lined for the whole build. However, I ended up taking this piece off three or four times for this entire build. So I would not put that top piece on just yet. I would put that on toward the end of the build. Uh, again, uh, it was it, I, I physically had to take it off a few times uh, just to make sure that the things I was putting in there um, would rock it and it, it would kind of peel my hot glue on one side. So it was, it was just a really annoyance um, from the jump. So I, I, would, I, would, I would save this for last. All right, so again, I'm gonna coat this. And again, if I was thinking correctly, I would have done this before I hot glued it and I could have done the bottom. And now that I hot glued it on there, I couldn't, I couldn't coat the bottom half that I cut. I have it in front of my fan, I have it uh, turned on, and I turn it on after every little thing I do just to make sure the gears are still in place, um, that I haven't messed anything up. Alright, so this is... Um, the minutes hand that I'm working on, and this is going to represent my uh, summer solstice and for my campaign. So I have a little starburst uh, flowers, and then I'm going to put a star on the center. Um, and not that that would actually really have a true purpose in my game, like I'm not going to time it or anything, uh, but it also lends, you know, uh, uniqueness to the actual overall build. Uh, almost everything else I'm going to use is going to be the same bead uh, just for lack of better supplies that I had. Um, you saw how I, I bent that second hand up and that's to make sure it has clearance to cover, to, to go over that minute hand when they pass. As you can tell, um, I coated everything in a white primer, white base coat. It's also not that fast. Uh, I, this this video was sped uh, two times, I believe, at this uh, this clip. All right, so now I have two picks. I painted these gold already. Uh, it has one or two coats of gold on it. The toothpicks uh, love to absorb that paint. So it takes a little while for it to uh, get that shiny gloss coat that's going to be the rest of it. Um, I decided that I needed more than this, so I go back and I put more toothpicks in, and there you go. So that's going to represent all the known planets that they know of, or that he knows of. Um, and then see how I showed you. So what I'm doing is that, that center is the sun. So now I'm going to make rays. And what I learned, those are the correct way to do it. Start off big and small. And the first, I don't know, what is that, seven? I was doing the opposite, and that was wrong. So start off thick and small. So on that same paper, I made a few little rings. Uh, one of them I put around the planets for like, you know, like Saturn or Jupiter or whatever their planets in this game, in this campaign is going to be called. Um, but just to give it some more uniqueness. So all I'm doing is I'm taking those strips that I used on the parchment paper and I'm just tapping them to the metal of my hot glue and that just uh, melts that, that back piece. And once it melts, I just quickly just slap it to the actual globe and it, it sticks, no problem. I 
I ended up trimming those first ones I did with a scissors um, just to make them cleaner than they had looked. Alright, so there we go. I have it painted all gold. That took the longest time because, again, I um, painted it after the fact. Uh, but it would have been much easier just to do that and then go back and do touch-ups. So now I'm going to try and cover this clockwork. And I have Dollar Tree foam board here. Um, I just did a really quick stencil. I, I didn't measure anything um, for this. I just did it all by eye. Um, and I was having the hardest time with this X-Acto knife because I thought it was my um, sharp one. And for some reason, I had the dull one sitting next to me, and it completely ripped that. So that one section that you see right here uh, was terrible, and I had to go back and, and uh, cut that piece out. Alright, so I just had a little circle laying around, so I'm going to use this to cut that base out. And as I'm doing this in my head, I'm like, what, why is, what is going on with this knife? I don't understand. Uh, and then I realized that in front of me uh, was my sharp one, and this was the broke one that I discarded to the side. So that was fun and aggravating. So all I'm doing right there is using my uh, nozzle just to melt and, and flatten those edges out a little better. And see, that's it's going to be just like that. However, I'm going to take that side off and fix it. All right, so I have a new piece cut. I uh, hot glue those down. I leave uh, one side with the paper on it, and that paper side is the side that gets glued. And the Dollar Tree foam has that one side that just almost falls off, and the other side's usually uh, pretty sticky. I don't know if they do that on purpose, but that's how every piece I've always gotten is. Um, so that just it helps that foam not melt as much being next to, uh, to that paper instead of straight onto the foam. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to encase the entire uh, clock on the sides. Uh, of course, I'm going to leave the bottom open because so it has battery access. And again, I wasn't measuring. I was just eyeballing. Um, and then I'm going to take uh, my hot glue gun. I'm going to stick it on low put it in front of my fan and then I'm going to work on this at the same time on low in front of my fan and I'm going to go fill all these cracks in with hot glue um, and what that what that fan does is it just allows that foam I'm sorry that hot glue to cool much faster and not melt your foam so as you can see it was a little it was a little sloppy looking uh, because the clock wasn't flat in some spots and uh, I could have took the extra time and just melted those spots out of the back of it that way it would sit flush but I figured I could just come back and add the extra hot glue and just cover those cracks so here it is painted I added some details just to give it some kind of astronomical appearance or magical ruins on it or, or whatever you want to put on there but uh, I just didn't want it to be plain looking so there it is I filled it in hot glue I painted it black as, uh, again see that toothpick I forgot to tell you that I added that in instead of me keep gluing and hot gluing I decided to put that toothpick on there that way I could take that globe off and on easy and it still would stay on where I need it uh, while I was working on the project If you're going to do that toothpick, make sure you lightly sand that second, the top of that second hand. That way that hot glue adheres to it very well. Alright, so there it is. Uh, I went and tried to fill those spots with the same gold that uh, the globe is made of. And here it is in the wizard's tower.
see how it has that little bitty shake to it that's from the weight uh but it still had that it still had it uh even with the second even when i didn't have anything on my clock to begin with it still had that little weird shake to it so i hope this helps uh, i hope y'all kind of get an idea what i was trying to do here um I think if I could build this again, it would be much better. Um, but hopefully this can inspire y'all to do something great. So thank y'all for watching.